Right now, there are only two space stations orbiting Earth, the decades-old ISS and China's Tiangong Space Station. Sure, Tiangong is newer and smaller, but don't let that fool you. Its advanced tech and efficient design are nothing to take lightly, and this is just the beginning. In just one to two years, Tiangong is set for a major upgrade, one that could completely change how we think about space stations. China's human spaceflight program, known as the Chinese Manned Space Program, CMS, has successfully completed a three-step plan. The phases were, one, proving they could launch and safely return astronauts, two, building a space lab that allowed spacewalks and docking with other spacecraft, and three, constructing and maintaining a long-term space station. In April 2021, China launched the Tianhe module, which kicked off the assembly of its Tiangong space station. Since then, they've regularly sent up cargo using Tianzhou spacecraft and astronaut crews aboard Shenzhou spacecraft. The Shenzhou is China's version of the SpaceX Crew Dragon or Boeing Starliner. Tianhe is the first module of a third-generation modular space station. It supports three astronauts with living space, guidance and navigation systems, and also handles power, propulsion, and life support. The module includes a living area, a service section, and a docking hub. The living quarters offer 50 cubic meters of space, much roomier than the earlier Tiangong-1, which had only 15 cubic meters. Inside, there's a kitchen, a toilet, fire safety systems, air and temperature controls, computers, scientific instruments, and communication gear. The station also features a large robotic arm, nicknamed the China Arm, that can move modules and cargo around. This arm is flexible, has seven degrees of motion, and works similarly to Canada's famous Canada Arm 2, used on the ISS. Electricity is provided by two solar panels that can rotate to follow the sun. When the station passes through Earth's shadow, stored energy keeps everything running. Zhenzhou cargo ships also refuel the engines, which help maintain the station's position in orbit using four ion thrusters. By the second half of 2022, China completed the main structure of Tiangong with two more modules, Wentian, Quest for the Heavens, launched in July, and Mengtian, Dreaming of the Heavens, in October. These modules arrived fully assembled and docked directly to the Tianhe core. Each provides extra space for experiments, housing over two dozen scientific racks for research. Tiangong is expected to operate for at least 15 years and will support both Chinese and international scientific collaborations. To keep things running, Tiangong is mostly resupplied by Tianzhou cargo ships launched on Long March 7 rockets. Since 2021, China has started inviting private companies to help with cargo delivery. New cargo spacecraft being developed include Haolong, with a 7,000 kg capacity, and Qingzhou, up to 2,000 kg, showing China's move toward a more open, commercially supported space station. So yeah, China's got a pretty solid little space station going on. It's definitely smaller than the ISS, but it's packed with all the essentials you'd expect from a science-focused station, and even some newer tech that gives it a bit of a modern edge. But China's not planning to just leave it at that. There's actually a big plan in motion for this station. The next big step comes in late 2026, when the Tiangong space station is set to be joined by China's massive space telescope, called Zhuntian. It'll launch aboard a Long March 5B rocket and go into orbit right alongside Tiangong, just in slightly different phases. That way, it can dock with the station from time to time for maintenance or upgrades, which is a pretty smart setup. Now, Zhuntian, officially known as the Chinese Space Station Telescope, is no ordinary telescope. It uses an off-axis optical design, which basically means there's nothing blocking the middle of the mirror. That avoids a bunch of optical problems caused by traditional support structures, especially diffraction issues, so the images it captures stay clean and sharp. That's super important when you're trying to measure things like weak gravitational lensing, where even the tiniest distortion matters. The main mission for the CSST is focused on high-resolution, wide-area imaging, and slitless spectroscopy. It's designed to scan a huge chunk of the sky across a broad range of wavelengths, from about 255 to 1,000 nanometers. The big scientific goal here is precision cosmology, figuring out the structure and evolution of the universe by observing galaxies, dark matter, and dark energy across wide and deep sections of the sky. 
Over about 10 years, it's expected to survey around 17,500 square degrees, which is a massive portion of the sky, and reach a point source limiting magnitude of around 26 in the GNR bands. Its slitless spectrograph will have a resolution of at least 200, with limiting magnitudes in the GV, 400 to 620 nanometers, and GI, 620 to 1000 nanometers, bands around 23 May. On top of that, it'll also target special deep fields that go at least one magnitude deeper than the general survey, giving scientists an even better look at distant or faint objects. The collective strengths of its angular resolution, depth, wavelength range, and capacity for both imaging and spectroscopy, coupled with extensive sky coverage, render the CSST survey highly competitive. Notably, the CSST's observations are poised to complement and enhance other contemporaneous large-scale projects, including the Vera C. Rubin Observatory, the Euclid Space Telescope, and the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope. You might think, ah, this must be the big plan for the China Space Station. Well, not quite. While the addition of the Junqian Space Telescope is certainly a major enhancement to Tian Gong's scientific capabilities, the truly significant developments are what come next. According to the China Manned Space Agency, the Tiangong Space Station is set to undergo a major expansion from its current three-module structure to a six-module configuration. This includes upgraded versions of the Tianhe, Wentian, and Mengtian modules. The first step in this transformation involves modifying the Tianhe core module to support additional modules. Currently shaped like a T, the space station will evolve into a more advanced cross shape or double T shape. Once completed, the expanded Tiangong will have a total mass of approximately 180 tons and is expected to have an operational lifespan of at least 15 years. A new multifunctional hub module with six docking ports is planned to serve as the foundation of this expansion. Upcoming modules will feature 3D printers, robotic systems, enhanced robotic arms, and space debris monitoring and warning systems. These upgrades will significantly boost China's ability to conduct large-scale scientific experiments, both inside and outside the station, including larger extravehicular experiments and more science racks. Another key advancement is the development of a next-generation reusable spacecraft, known as Mengzhou. This versatile spacecraft will come in two variants, one designed for crewed lunar missions and another for transporting astronauts to and from Tiangong. Mengzhou will be capable of supporting three astronauts for lunar expeditions and up to seven astronauts for space station missions, greatly expanding China's human spaceflight capabilities. China conducted a boilerplate test flight of its next-generation crewed spacecraft in 2020, a preliminary mission without life support systems or other operational components. The spacecraft's first full operational flight is expected around 2027, and it will launch aboard a low-Earth orbit variant of the in-development Long March 10 rocket. Notably, the new spacecraft will be partially reusable, marking a significant step toward more sustainable and cost-effective spaceflight for China's human space program. Being the new kid on the block, the China Space Station took a good look at what worked and what didn't with the ISS, and chose the most effective path forward. Take budget, for example. China is credited with building Tiangong for only about $8 billion, based on interviews with chief designer Zhou Jianping around the time it was finished in late 2022. Now compare that to NASA's ISS budget, which runs about 3 to $4 billion every year, and the total cost of the ISS has already gone well over $100 billion. That kind of contrast really shows how China is going for maximum results with a much leaner investment. It's a smart, strategic push to show leadership in space without spending like the old guard. China's Tiangong space station is right at the cutting edge when it comes to on-orbit tech demos. Since 2024, it's been busy testing more than 20 high-performance process chips in space, ranging from 16 to 28 nanometers. These are homegrown Chinese chips, including some from Longsan, a competitor to big names like AMD and Intel. Not only are they space-hardened and budget-friendly, but they're also reportedly outperforming the chips used by other countries in orbit. All of this fits right into China's bigger goal of pushing AI and autonomous systems in space. 
And that's not all. Tian Gong is also diving into lunar construction research. In late 2024, the Tianzhou 8 cargo ship delivered some bricks made from simulated lunar regolith, a fancy name for moon dirt. These bricks are now mounted on the outside of the station, going through a three-year stress test, dealing with vacuum, radiation, and wild temperature swings. The cool part? These lunar bricks are said to be three times stronger than regular red or concrete bricks. They'll eventually be brought back to Earth for study, and will help guide future 3D-printed habitats on the moon as part of China's ILRS, International Lunar Research Station, project. And if all that sounds futuristic, here's something that's happening right now. The Tiangong Classroom. This is China's way of inspiring the next generation of space explorers. Taikonauts aboard the station host live science lessons showing off experiments in microgravity and interacting in real time with students across China, from elementary school to high school. We're talking spherical flames, gyroscopes, and even a behind-the-scenes look at the station itself. The fourth Tiangong classroom aired on September 21, 2023, live from the Mingtian Lab module. It connected with five different locations on Earth, including Beihong University and various science museums, reaching over 2,400 students and teachers. Honestly, if I were a Chinese student, physics would totally be my favorite class. In 2025, China's manned space program made headlines with a major first, the selection of foreign astronauts to fly aboard the Tiangong space station. This move marks a game-changing step in international cooperation, especially for China's high-profile space missions. Up until now, most of China's space partnerships with other countries were focused on uncrewed missions, so opening up its manned space program to international participants shows a real shift and a strong signal that China is serious about sharing its most important space resources. Inviting foreign astronauts isn't just symbolic. It's a practical step toward advancing humanity's understanding of space. It boosts the station's efficiency, allows other countries to run their own experiments, and brings in new expertise that China alone might not have. Sure, the U.S. has done international cooperation through the International Space Station, but let's be honest, that's mostly involved wealthy Western countries. What China is doing here breaks that pattern. They're making it possible for developing nations to take part, even those without their own rockets or crewed launch programs. As part of this initiative, the first selected candidate, a Pakistani astronaut, will go through a full year of training in China. After that, they'll join Chinese taikonauts aboard Tiangong for a short-term flight mission scheduled to launch within the next few years. China's commercial low-Earth orbit ecosystem is growing fast. It's a mix of state investment and tech innovation, all coming together to build a competitive platform around the Tiangong space station, plus a growing network of civil and commercial space projects. Now, while this doesn't yet threaten U.S. leadership in LEO or scientific access, it's a clear sign that the game is changing. To keep that edge, the U.S. will need to move fast and make sure its commercial space station efforts, backed by NASA and private industry, actually launch and deliver. Otherwise, that leadership might not last as long as people assume.